You don't eat? Didn't see anything I like. Yeah? What is it you like? Nuts, bolts, microchips. That was a joke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was this one of the best lines. <laughs> this big pin and then there's Master Chief. <laughs> <laughs> so so what is your number ray is it is it uh ray 225 no it's it's 099 oh uh, yes <laughs> how, could I, how could that escape me oh my freaking god Aww. yes come on ray take his take his side of my car away take it out <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky we don't have a leader army cards because I might have to take that off you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, please, no! I Even I know that, man. <laughs> I do want a part two. <laughs> I did actually put it in my name today. I don't know why you missed it. <laughs> I think I think that Robert just don't want it hard enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to work on that, Robert. I mean, yeah. he he keeps on telling me fantasies like, "How about the last Airbender that has a movie and the Dragon Ball has a movie." <laughs> So, I mean, I don't know where he's getting his information from or what he's spending his time doing, man. But I don't think it's any good. I live What's in it? an alternative universe, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. Okay. So. <laughs> what are we doing uh, again? <laughs> it, I, I don't know. Gio, do you know what we're doing today? Oh, yeah. You I want mean, me to it, tell you? It's not, it's not that in the low, it, it's in the lower third in the video, you know, so, you know. No, it's not, it's not like we say what we do or anything like that either, you know? <laughs> what we're doing is, it sounds like... We should have done that shit like the chorus, man, before starting the show. Just thinking ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I just had this issue like with my Xbox One out, I don't know why. <laughs> And then I would have gone like with my mouth, my, my mouth just started adding like, you know, you know, there's a number of themes that you know just a pump up music like the original Superman theme from from the 70s mm -hmm. and and the Halo soundtrack, the the yeah, Jones, man. music, it, it just pumps you up. You can listen to it first thing in the morning and just. Indiana Jones, man. Doesn't matter how shitty it is, you feel like you're gonna just take over a behemoth. Yeah, but... <laughs> I would have to say for the for the listeners who are listening right now, if you wanna uh, hear what we're talking about, there's an episode that we recorded called "I Love Bees." You should go ahead and listen. Yeah. So um, it has nothing to do with honey, guys. I love, I love bees. Okay. No. FYI. Yeah. Sad so, to know. you activists, I'm sorry to disappoint you. It's not about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so should we go to the uh, first segment? Yeah. Define science fiction remnant. Well, and for this one, actually, I have a special thank you for Mr. Steve Horizon underscore Brave. He actually... Uh, gave us uh, feedback on defining what we are to him. We really appreciate what, what he said. He said, have fun. So glad to stumble into the circle and have been welcomed so readily. Have you all been watching Ander? He has also. So, <laughs> I mean, I haven't started Ander, though. I have it on my list. But, okay, can you, can you say his name again? Uh, it's Steve Horizon underscore Rafe. And his handle is... Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now we feel like a reggaeton radio station. <laughs> we had a thing going on. <laughs> and he's handled just for everybody that are, are there. Like it's uh, my ghost world altogether. So everybody can find him on Twitter. He has a lot of interesting views, and we love always uh, hitting it up with him in conversations. It's just super fun. Yeah, we we, yeah, we really our, love the interaction. That's our defined science fiction. Actually, very nice. And I mean, I'm happy that, that he enjoys it and he's glad to have fun already. We hope that we yeah. can continue to bring entertainment and 
fun. I'll try to be as clown as possible. It's better when I don't try. <laughs> yeah. If you come here for Captain Chaos, don't worry. You know, he, he, he'll he he'll bring it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the harder I try, the worse I do. <laughs> Chaos is my middle name. Sabotage is my first. <laughs> oh, man. And let, him know, let us know if you guys want a t-shirt. You know, reach out. I'll we haven't done one yet. <laughs> okay. I'm feeling cool, man. Huh? So what's the next segment? There we go. We are Science Fiction Remnant. This is the Funny Science Fiction Podcast. We are the Caribbean Science Fiction Network. We are Mono Rats. We are One Accord Level 2 Podcast. This is Jesse from Sudden But Inevitable and Open Pike Night. This is Sci-Fi. And you know the drill. For this segment, we talk about our favorite hashtag. This is Sci-Fi. Um, I don't know what you, your uh, interaction has been uh, in this hashtag this week. Um, but you know what? If you follow it, you know what I do. It's like whenever I read an uh, uh, interesting article, um, I post it. There's a couple that just called my attention that I want to name. Um, we have uh, one article that I posted where uh, we can... Actually, this is from uh, Screen Rant. I I've been reading a lot of that lately. Um, I don't know if that says anything about me, but... Um, Star Trek, the 10 worst decision made by Starship captains. That was a, an interesting article that I read there. Um, I know they, the they, they should finish that one before breakfast. <laughs> 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 yep, yep. And another one that I've really, I don't know if I feel a little exciting. This is from Giant Freaking uh, Robot. Um, it's another uh, magazine, online magazine that I've been reading. Um, Kirk Russell returning for Scape from New York sequel. And I'm, I don't know if I'm a, I'm a little exciting uh, about that one. So I, I love found that one. one that actually rubbed me away. The mm -hmm. world first computer, the anti Kitheran me mechanism started up in 178 BC scientist yes. claims. Isn't that Holy awesome? Shit, bro. Yep. Yep. I was reading about that uh, this uh, morning, I believe. Oh, and, and of course, we, we can't go any further than, you know, how exciting uh, it is for NASA and all the tweets that I have uh, sent over for like the Artemis 1 launch. Um, it It's really, really awesome. Oh, yeah. um, I actually waited uh, um, a week. Uh, it was like 1.45 a.m., if I'm not mistaken, just to see the launch. Um, a little nerve-wracking, you know, and, and to quote um, Steve Horizon Brave, where he said he's, he also agreed it was a little uh, nerve-wracking because, um, you know, there, there was that leak again. And then uh, the Red Team, every time they mention that, I keep on imagining, you know, Red Leader from Star, <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, but they were amazing because I think they saved uh, the launch. They were able to go in there, fix it. And uh, Artemis is on its way to the moon. So really exciting. So this is the kind of stuff that I uh, that you will find when you go through the This Is Sci-Fi. Uh, aside from all the other uh, creators, they create sci-fi content. They post into that. So there's also that discovery factor into it. Um, have you have anything that you want to mention that you have? Um, I know it re uh, Geo mentioned something, but it, 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 like you, like you said, Ray, before it is, it's uh, a point some overwhelming uh, because of all the stuff that is um, that that is posted on that the hashtag, and that makes me excited because um, that used not used to be that like that. And and it's like, it's 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 hopping. Well, it's better than less. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay, so 
If you want to, and, and I mentioned this in every episode, just so you guys have the opportunity, if you want to be uh, mentioned in our show, um, you could actually send a, a comment via Twitter. Um, it could be for the Define Science Fiction Remnant, where you define us. It could be uh, this is sci-fi, when you want to mention something in particular, or if you have any questions um, that you want us to answer on the show, um, it, or any messages for, for any of the hosts of the show, uh, you can just tweet tweet at us and uh, let us know. You, you'll be um, in our next episode. And of course, we have that, that um, hotline that you can call, um, and we will definitely play your message on our next episode. So that number is 1-305-563-6334. Um, and with that, we go to our next segment. Shout out. You're mm. muted. Gio, you're <laughs> muted. Oh my god, I'm trying to mute this thing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I never failed. It fails. See, the harder I try, the more I, the best I fail. <laughs> if you guys have a jingle for Captain Chaos, now we'll take it. Send your submissions. <laughs> <laughs> well, for this segment, as I was gonna say for the third time now. <laughs> first and foremost, I wanted to let everybody know that we are now part of Blind Knowledge Network. And I suggest everybody to go and check them out. They're full of like uh, good contents. And I would definitely tell everybody, go and check them out. You can find all their types of uh, uh, elements, uh, video gaming, uh, other podcasts, music, uh, everything. And besides, next to that, uh, oh my God, the computer is messing up, bro. Can you believe this thing? Oh, you what else is system? new, man? <laughs> oh my Did god! Did you break Look, it? Uh, okay, break here it? it is. Finally, <laughs> oh my god, man! <laughs> today is not my day. I'm like that little star on Finding Nemo. Today is the day. <laughs> 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 I wanted to give a special thank you to Cinema Recall too. Cinema Recall has always been participating, engaging with us, retweeting, giving us support, um, and, and I really, really appreciate that too. Uh, yeah. It's, it's very nice of them. We always have a good, very good conversation with them. They are great to talk to. So very, very special thank you to them. They keep up the good work. And keep on bringing episodes of your show, too. We love it. <laughs> yes, yes. And last but not least, Kelly. And this is going to... Sorry, Kelly. I'm going to not butcher. I'm going to make homicidal attempt to the second part <laughs> of the name. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly thinks Kyorgi. I hope that that's great. <laughs> but your handle on Twitter is actually easy to say, antipodal. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to give you a special thank you too for, for the support, for retweeting, for spreading uh, to everybody else out there what we are, Science Fiction Remnant. Thank you so much for that. And keep up the good work. Awesome. Okay, so... Can I make a quick shout out to Manic Pixie Widow? Oh, definitely. You know, I... um, she she she's very busy on Twitter and she drops a whole bunch of really That's interesting true. stuff and shares so many podcasts. I've discovered so many podcasts through her retweets. But um, this there's one particular um, uh, tweet that I just wanted to to bring up that that I'm looking at right now. It's um, it's a sign that she's seen. Uh, somewhere I don't know where it is exactly but she's taking a photo of it or she's got a photo of it and she shared it and it says life is like a camera focus on what is important capture the good times develop from the negatives and if things don't work out take another shot nice <laughs> nice nice it's true love it so what I do I, I do with the other hard drive space I've wasted on 50,000 photos <laughs> <laughs> oh wow so, yeah, all of you, thank you so much. And every one of you who actually interact and engage with us in Twitter and on Discord, uh, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, and, and just hope that you guys, and by the way, I don't know if you guys know, um, we are going to start doing this 
uh, going forward. So if you are not a, uh, a member of our Discord channel, uh, you might want to think about that and join. Um, if you don't know how to use it, reach out. I got a couple of videos I can send you that shows you how to use it. But basically, the reason why I'm mentioning this is um, this is our very first recording that you are that we are actually doing live on Discord. So if you are in uh, Discord on uh, Sunday at around 6 p.m. Eastern time, um, you can go into uh, the welcome category. Um, category you you'll find a channel called Recording in Session. And um, by the way, that is the only channel that has that red dot. Um, you can click on there and you can actually listen to us record live. So, um, yeah, this is just another reason why you want to join our Discord channel. Um, it's really cool. So join us. And again, thank you so much for your interaction. Uh, we really, really enjoy it and look forward every day. Thank you. So for our next segment. The outer random. Is that me? Yeah. <laughs> Is that my turn? I think it's my turn. That's your cue. That's your cue. <laughs> That's my cue. <laughs> uh, dear. It, well, usually, I mean, I, I spent a couple of weeks where I, I actually missed the Elite Army live stream, but uh, was on there this week uh, in, in, a, in a major way, make, make a big comeback kind of deal. Uh, but... Um, yeah, uh, this week on um, uh, the Leader Army Radio Chaos, which um, Gian Callow has been making uh, a few times regularly, not not this week, but, um, you know, Captain Chaos on Radio Cast, it makes a whole lot of sense, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Especially when but, it's virtual. <laughs> virtual <laughs> Captain Chaos, yeah. <laughs> bring, the, bring the chaos virtually. Uh, but uh, this week, and I've... Uh, for, for those people who, who are viewing this on YouTube, I've just thrown up the, the uh, background link for, the, uh, for that one. Uh, so what we were talking about was um, Alita Anime 2.0. Uh, could Alita do well in another type of story? Um, and uh, I had um, high hopes that the discussion would be uh, quite, um, quite lively, but uh, the people who are on the panel with me didn't know much about anime. So it ended up being um, a two hour and 45 minute episode uh, of me telling uh, people lots about anime. So I, I kind of got into it. <laughs> but we, we, we talked about um, Space Adventure. Uh, this one is a particularly good one I've been watching recently called um, Bodacious Space Pirates. Hmm. But so I, I've mean, actually that's a mean like Robert kind of thing. <laughs> it, well, Is it I thought it was by any chance. Hey, listen. I thought it was going to be a bit cheesy because it's actually from a from no a, shit. Uh, light novel, <laughs> the a light novel series called um, uh, Mini Skirt Space Pirates. Oh my god! Hey, Captain Captain, like Captain, dodgy. Captain Chaos, don't insult space space my pirates. cat, my cat because, planet cuties, okay? Because speed pirates are not. Enough. You had to be making it wear a mini skirt, right? Yeah. Hey, Captain Captain Chaos. If you want to say something bad about uh, Cat Planet Cuties, say it to my face. Oh no! <laughs> I, don't have I love to say Cat Planet that. Cuties. That was a great. Even the I last... Shit. The last. <laughs> that's, that's the, the last... best jigglist anime I ever seen. <laughs> the last bit of the last episode of Cat Planet Cuties is awesome. I'm not going to spoil, but um, yeah, it, is, it 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 makes the whole series. But anyway, um. And it's got to do with the sci-fi involved, not not with the jigglies. But um, I'm sorry, uh, this, man. This there's particular nothing, one, I... there's nothing comic about <laughs> sci-fi in there. Hey, we might do an episode. I can't on be alone. Yes. I I should get you guys to watch this because it's actually got quite a fair bit of science in it. Um, but but this one, I've actually changed the faces, so these aren't the original faces. That's um that's a leader, and that's Erica. Uh, because in, it, it, uh, I found this drawing of Erica aged up uh, from um, uh, Mars Chronicles with her eye patch still on, and it's totally um, space priority. So that worked out well. But nice. um, yeah, uh, just talking about um, Alita and what other 
um, sort of sorts of uh, genres in anime that she that her character may fit into. And I ended up going through um, space adventure, um, rom coms, uh, isekais. Um, it was quite extensive, and I thought I was going <laughs> to going to end up with nobody watching but a lot of people stuck around at the end they found it really interesting so i was really pleased about that yeah but that's a that's a fairly long one i, I warn you like it, it's it's even longer than um as i as i call it um, science fiction remnant long so <laughs> it's even longer <laughs> than that yes oh yes awesome but we had a lot of fun well i had a lot of fun <laughs> A lot of people were, were listening to my TED talk. But <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is, I would have to say, it is fun um, to listen to, to be in it. I, I, I've been there a couple of times. Uh, it's fun to to have those conversations. And it's fun to actually watch and listen to the conversations. So I, I do I do strongly recommend it. And especially if you want part two or a lead up. Like we and part three and part four and part five. And part three. We we want a TV show. Come on, let's Give start. Let's start for for just a TV show or a movie sequel, so they they don't get scared and don't do anything. Well, you <laughs> know, I want something. I want a theme park. I, dude, I, yeah. <laughs> Damn it, bro. <laughs> nah, I'm well, not gonna, you know, I never thought of that we're, shit. A we're talking Disney here. That. I mean. <laughs> Look, man. Park. When you talk about a theme park, Alita, I easier think that they would do a burdel. That is team with Alitas. Alitas. Oh my God. And they show you know, the Berserker Amors and shit. No, that's so, how. Yeah. <laughs> <Shoot>. <laughs> Stop distracting like me. I'm trying to do a podcast here. Right. right like, like, <laughs> like, like the cover from the jungle. Like, you have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Should, should we switch over to another lady that we love very much? Switch over, and Which she's one? not. She's not human. We share. Oh, she's not human. No, she's not human. The alien queen. That's that what she, I'm talking about. She's holographic. <laughs> no, man. I mean, oh, Cortana is cool only in the series. Uh, for everything else, thank you, Siri. <laughs> I think that let me just not do bad promotion <laughs> advertising. <laughs> yeah, shut up right now. <laughs> What about, what about Alexa? You give uh, Siri love, but not Alexa. She will tell you just what Siri likes to say a lot. Sorry, I didn't get that. <laughs> At least Cortana is snarky. So, uh, if if you guys are listening to the episode, you know what we're going to talk about. It is the Paramount Plus TV show adaptation of the game Halo named Halo. Shock. <laughs> oh, I, thought, I thought it was I thought it was a uh, uh, Beyonce song. Halo, Halo. <laughs> well, you know, it could have been named anything. If we if we look at the records of all the previous live uh, adaptations of Halo. Yeah, Beyonce actually um, played Erise. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love you, Beyonce. Screw C G C I like her anyway. <laughs> so we're talking about this TV show, and I have to ask first because I'm dying to find out what was, and you guys can take turn. What was your reaction? That's what she said <laughs> to the very first episode. Of this TV show. <laughs> Sorry, that was too good. I didn't get to let it go. <laughs> you guys can take turn. <laughs> <laughs> Cortana so, would be so disappointed in you right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you were saying before we take turns, Robert. <laughs> what is your reaction coming from someone that has played Halo as much as we all three have? The very first time, and, and granted, there's a lot of movies, there's, there's a lot of live action prior to this, Right. And there's TV shows. Granted, they're more of a anime style or or, or drawing style. Um, what is your first reaction on watching the first episode of this series? Finally, is here. Yes. 
and inside of my head. <laughs> you know, I feel like a child all over again. <laughs> I'll go ahead and tell you how you know my reaction was. So you 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 get a sense of where I'm coming from with this question. Um I don't watch sports. Right. Everybody that knows me knows I don't watch sports. Neither do I. Um, Neither do I. You know, my, my daughter you does. <laughs> like I watch sci-fi, man. <laughs> and I have friends that do. And, and, Are you uh, watching the finals like, of sci-fi? This it's, year? It's, okay. <laughs> and it's okay. You know, but if you were at my house when this episode first um, it was first released and I was watching it, you would think that I was watching a football game. <laughs> I was screaming at the TV. I was getting up, yelling, jumping. And I had my brother on the line. And his wife, you can hear her say, dude, if you don't shut up, I'll turn the TV off. Ooh, rough. And this is how we were, both of us, watching this show. We are big huge Halo fans. Um, I played, I believe I played every Halo, every Halo game ex except for one. Um, so when this show was announced, I was really excited. I actually have watched every Halo um, adaptation that has come to TV. Um, I have actually read the books. Um, and I would have to say, this is different. And I'm kind of curious to see if your reaction on watching this the very first time was the same as it was for me. Well, I had my analysis hat on because I was watching it for the pod rather than just watching it for personal enjoyment. Uh, but um, the first thing that occurred to me was mm, it's got a good budget. Uh, the CGI was, you know, steps up from all the other Halo stuff um, that's been around. Um, the um, the Covenant Warriors, the Elites, um, I I don't know if I they I I don't feel like they were as well done as they could have been. They they just didn't seem quite like convincing to me. They they didn't seem as convincing as the models in the game. Um, just. I don't know. It just it just felt like they were attacking because they were attacking. It didn't seem like they had any any major goal in mind, which you know doesn't make a lot of sense for for um, Covenant forces. Um, I think they were just there for target practice, really, to show off the the Spartans when they rocked up. It um, definitely feels that way. Yeah, I think they could have. I think they could have given them a reason to attack, like. Um, Maybe if there was some chat, because they were that there was subtitled um, speech between them, so you could could tell what they were saying, but there was nothing like um, wipe them out. They've discovered us. We don't want to getting back to the UMC or something like that. Any anything that you know gave them a reason to do that, rather than just oh, we'll just kill some humans while we're waiting for the for the uh, excavation team to finish digging that thing up. You know, even if. Just some sort of reason why they were shooting everybody. It just it's just seemed a little bit. Yeah, eh. but I, I mean, have seen I have seen the series multiple times, and I'm kind of curious. Uh, and and just for all of you listeners, just so you know, we um I only ask everybody to watch the first episode. I I have watched the entire season multiple times. Um, I believe, and, and Geo, you can tell me. We don't we don't want to get into details, obviously, because we're only talking about this episode. But let me know what you feel, because you have watched a lot more than Ray has, and I believe there is a reason why they're attacking. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you know the nature of what Halo is and what the Covenant is embarking on a mission to do, you don't really need a need. They don't really need a reason to kill every other shit they see around moving that is not trying to join them. I <laughs> But I, I do see I do see Ray's point because if you watch this episode and, and this is all you have base uh, from, um, this is the conclusion that you have. You know, you play. You find game. out what the Halo is and what they're trying to do, then you're gonna be like, oh, that's why they're just attacking, kill everything else. 
Yeah, but you know, <laughs> the, show could, the show could go anywhere. You know, how many shows, you know, have, or movies, you know, The Last Airbender, um, has gone oh, oh, a complete different route from the original yeah. source material. And, and from the first episode, you don't know what's going to happen. A lot of people were, even, including myself, I was really excited for the visuals because I think they managed to do something very hard to do, which is trying to convert the, the, the game into a, into a TV show visual. But from the first episode, you don't know where they're going to go. And wow. I was fearful that they would take this. And, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of comments online where people still do not like um, the season after they watch the entire thing and they have the reasons, including the creator of Bungie. Ooh. They have the reasons. It's what I say. Your opinion, you're entitled to it. So, like, let me go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me go ahead and mention this. Um, this is, and, and I was actually reading this too, which is very interesting. Uh, Marcus Lido uh, on Twitter, he was responding to a comment. I can't remember the original comment, but someone was actually asked him. They were saying that they didn't like the show. And I wonder what this guy would feel about this show. And he said in Twitter, yeah, I'm not sure where the inspiration for the show comes from now, not the halo I made. And then someone retweeted that and say, damn, uh, when one of those original creators behind the halo hates the TV show adaptation, it's time to cancel it. And he responded to that, says, hey, I didn't say I hate the show. Some parts are interesting, just confused by many of the choices that were made, which feel pretty far outside the core fiction I helped create. Exactly. And, and, he just said it I, right there and then. That he, the show he is not create. Bad. He doesn't own it completely, you know? Well, if, if you if you remember, um, it, you know, Bungie actually, what was it? Let me see. There... That was um, the first shit that popped up after Microsoft on the video game, Bungie Studios. They, they and the first thing that I played Halo was Halo One: The uh, Combat Evolve on a Mini Mac, a Mac Mini. Uh, I, but I, I played mean, it on a PC. They, they responded uh, properly time. correctly. You know, they say that they helped create. They are not claiming total ownership over the IP, and they are not saying they're not poorly uh, uh, giving publicity about it, you know? They're just saying they are not completely happy with the turn of events. But then again, this happens all the time uh, because at the end of the day, that's what happens when you have more than one head working on a project. Well, it's not going to be unison all the time, you know? Synergy is not always supposed to be what happening. Here's one thing that I want to mention that kind of makes sense to me. And, and I wonder what you guys think about. I don't know if you if you follow this or not, but, you know, when when Bungie completed the last uh, Halo uh, title, which was Halo Reach, um, the three, they were working with 350, uh, 343 st uh, Industries, right? Uh, they were they they were eventually given control. Of the entire Halo franchise, including the servers, uh -huh. on, on March 31st, 20, uh, 2012. So from that moment on, you know, uh, 343 Industries took over um, and they actually created Halo 4, uh, which they began um, in 2000 and they actually, <laughs> which is kind of funny, they, did, they, uh, they, they actually began that in 2009. So that tells you how long it is for a game to actually come into fruition. Um, so I wonder, you know, granted, this explains why Bungie was not included in the list of um, companies that were involved in 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 this in the production of this TV show, which is, you know, obviously Paramount, Paramount Plus uh, is Showtime, is uh, obviously 343 Industries and Ambling. But the thing that excites me the most is that 343 Industries was very heavily involved in the production of this TV show. And I wonder if the reason why I like it so much is because they were involved. And if you go ahead and watch the 
I don't I want to say documentaries, but not, they're not technically documentaries. They're uh, they're behind, behind the scenes. scenes. Yeah, you could see how um, how involved for the you know three forty three were in the creation of this uh, TV show, in the props, in in the visuals. Uh, um, they were heavily involved in this, and and I it, I think it, it to me it is a huge challenge because three forty three industries do they do video games and and going from video games to tv show is a huge difference and and i think they did a great job and not only that but in paying um attention to details i do agree with the the, the creator of bungie that some of the you know stories some of the stuff you know they, they they're kind of like separated the inspiration just like he said went somewhere else uh, but overall uh, just like he said he doesn't hate the show i i love the show and, and i think it could have been worse but then again because i you know if you guys hear me talk about all the other ips that i'm passionate in love with you'll know that maybe i am biased Maybe, so, course, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, so, we'll just take the maybe off the front. You are the maybe. The maybe itself is biased. Yeah. So I wanna, I wanna, I wanna hear your opinion on what I just said and see. I think that the fact that three forty three industries were involved is the reason why this show is as good, um, because we had had many multiple attempts prior to this. That although I feel they were good, they were not as good as this. So I would say I would say so. Like usually, it's miraculous if the main IP creators, at some degree, are not involved into something that is expanding from another product. That will be successful, you know. Usually, it's a total flop where it goes wrong. Now we have people saying that Dragon Ball has a real life movie, for example. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I'm gonna stop right there. Using examples, uh, it's not very toxic. <laughs> you, should. you really should. <laughs> uh, so I think that it was a great part of the success that the series has. I mean, when you look at it, it's sort of quality. You don't even have to like the video game or ever play it or know about it to enjoy the show. The show is fun, and I think that that's the big, re big good recipe about good shows. Yeah, I'm not saying that, that it was a bad show. It's just some of the choices they made storytelling-wise uh, may have been limited by the budget. I mean, it's kind of weird that the budget is stated as um, uh, 90 million to 200 million. And it's like, that's a big range. That's a bigger range than the bottom end. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, well, didn't didn't you guys like add it up? Can can you not tell how much you spent on this thing? <laughs> like, the, the, the difference between 90 million and 200 million is 120 million dollars. 120 million dollars is not, you know, pocket change. It's a lot of money. Nah, um, yes. what it is. Why why don't you know how much you spent on this thing? Um were you were you like bribing people and the bribes are under the table so it wasn't accounted for i don't know why is there such a wide range on this budget but i i sort of look at the first episode and go it would have made more sense to me as a longtime player of the franchise if rather than just have elites attack the humans there should have been some of those little guys there should have been some of the bird snipers they should have had you know at least a few of the other races in there um you know, standing guard or standing watch, um, being involved somehow because the covenant is just not elites, and and just introducing elites in the first episode and none of the other covenant races just felt to me to be a little bit um, short-handed. Um, maybe they just didn't have the the budget in the first episode to introduce the other races. I mean, they spent. You can see they spent a lot of money on this show with the human side of things. It was reminding me of Starship Troopers with the number of troops that were piling into the landing bay, um, mm -hmm. with, with with the way they're all sort of rocking up there, um, and uh, and the other designs of the of the specific. Um, um, uh, Spartans was really good too. I mean, they spent time 
individualizing them and making them interesting and giving them their own sort of like there was the sniper guy and the close combat guy or girl, I think. Um, well, she had a radio pack on her back, so she might have been the sniper guy had no as well. Okay, and, let me uh, let me say something <laughs> before you continue. Yeah, don't don't insult Kai one twenty five. I, I love Kai. The sniper guy has nice boobs. <laughs> no, Kai is an amazing Spartan. Oh my god! I haven't seen right other there. episodes. Don't there don't you go, Robert. Me. Simp all over her. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm a simp. Kai one two five. Yes, forget okay. John one 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 seven. You see, you see, Ray, what happens when Robert Simp, he, does, he even forgets to count. He says one, two, five now instead of one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, uh, that's her name. That's her name. Kai one, two, five. <laughs> you know, we have, and, and just so you guys know, we have the silver team l led by John 117. Um, and John has uh, three Spartans, uh, Riz uh, 028. Um, she is amazing with a with a magnum. She has two magnum guns. Oh my god! Uh, and we get to see her doing this in the first episode. Then we have Vanak one three five uh, one three four. Uh, Vanak, uh, he has um, your your typical assault rifle, uh, but he is oh my god! He's you you think Spartans are typical. wrong? You think Spartans are tr are strong? He, he there was a scene when he grabbed one of the elites. Uh, and he just picked them up with a with a stick all the way in the, in the air and just throw them like a rag. It, it, yeah, you know. He's yeah, that, good. that That's was not it. a stick. That was a pipe. <laughs> that was a pipe. Well, it might have might as well be a stick by the way he's grabbing it. Well, and, <laughs> yeah, he kind of make a pinch and go to barbecue with it. <laughs> and we have my favorite Kai one two five. You know, Kai, love Kai. So yeah, Ray doesn't much uh, know about. This characters because in the first episode, we don't get to see their faces. We don't get to see. We don't have enough. Um, I can guarantee one thing, right? You're gonna see every one of the characters for the Covenant in future episodes. And I wonder, uh, Gio, I don't know how far you have you are in the show in the series, but almost done. Uh, you're almost done. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Gio. By the way, if you don't know, Gio is milking it. Because he's just he doesn't want it to end. Um, I am suffering because it ended, and I want more. Um, so yeah. Um, but the in this episode, um, we don't we don't get to see much about the Spartans. Um, and I wonder, you know, just like Ray said, we only see the elites from the, from the Covenant side. Um, I wonder if their uh, Paramount is doing this uh, for the shock factor, because I remember when they, the, all of them were introduced um, eventually. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say this briefly because I don't want to get into it and into the details. Uh, but it was very exciting to see them for the first time. So I wonder if they, this was done intentionally, but I definitely see where Ray is coming from. Uh, do you see that, uh, Gio? Do you yeah. do you believe that's the reason, or maybe? I would I would think so. I mean, you don't want them to give you everything in one blow at the first episode, you know. And this is something long awaited too. So it's like, like you don't want to show your cards before the the, the river flow comes in. Let's see, call and, it a poker. And there's a reason why they're along, without, you know, actually. Uh, I'm, this is a, a, a super spoiler podcast. So, what? No shit, I'm, really? <laughs> so, the reason why I'm saying this, I'm going to say something, but I want Ray to let me know if he wants me to say it or not. Well, I can always just take my headphones off. <laughs> you guys <laughs> do. Oh, no, come on. You have to do and it. Then right. you can like, la, 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 la. <laughs> la, la, la. Well, I didn't, I didn't want to spoil the podcast by going, la, 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 la. <laughs> But yeah, well, let me leave it at that. Without saying anything, there, there is an explanation as to why later on uh, in future episodes as to why they're alone and magical. So, well, the, the 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 feeling I got uh, as a writer was that while it wasn't representative of how the Covenant normally work in the computer game because they don't just go in with a bunch of elites, mm -hmm. nominally you get one or two elites. You don't get twelve or fourteen of them all rocking around together. Yes. The, the the chances of a normal human being with standard anti-personnel 
weaponry, being able to even scratch one of those guys is very, very low, uh, which was pretty damn obvious when there was 12 of them rocking around that base, just wiping everybody out. Yeah. Um, so I, I, they, I, I'm pretty sure the ride in, around the writers' table and the writers' room is like, oh, the first episode we should have have uh, elites slaughtering humans left, right, and center. And this is pretty damn brutal. I mean, the the um, well, actually, we haven't done the plot. Should we do the plot? You know what? Why don't we do the plot? <laughs> hey, let's do the plot. We <laughs> actually a have good a, idea. <laughs> we actually have a, a, a quite succinct plot because it's it's only one episode of the show, but. Um, in 2552, the Covenant attack an insurrectionist outpost on the planet Madrigal, massacring everyone except for a teenager, Quan Ha, before the Spartan unit Silver Team intervenes. Well, that's not quite correct. They intervened and tried to save the people who were left, but no, the only one they managed to su successfully save was Quan Ha <laughs> because because she had the runaway skill at a very high level. If I say, would have made any. <laughs> Um, to to she reference one of my on stealth. to reference one of my favorite <laughs> characters from anime, she had the Atami gene. Uh, <laughs> you know who I'm talking about? Atami from Gate, whose major skill in the special forces was run away. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, that's and what she I said. Had the... She rolled a twenty on uh, stealth. Well, she wasn't really stealthing. She was just like Jack Rabbit. She was Jack <laughs> Rabbiting. <laughs> She was out of there and she was being shot at and chased and they were ripping doors off and chasing her around. She was just bolting. Yeah. Uh, and yet uh, they who, who turn and run away live to fight another day. It's, it's just the way it works. So um, especially when you're facing 14 elites, um, which you pretty much never have to face in the game. When you're a Spartan, you don't usually have to go up against that many of them, but there was a bunch of them there. Um, and yeah, I'd say in the writer's room, they just said, let's have an overwhelming force of bad guys so the Spartans really look cool when they rock up. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so anyway, um, where did I get to? Master Chief Petty Officer John 117 discovers and retrieves a Forerunner Keystone. I knew it was Forerunner Tech. Um, that reacts to his touch, displaying mysterious symbols and unlocking some of his sealed childhood memories. A surviving Covenant elite witness at, witnesses and reports this to the Prophet of Mercy at the Covenant Capital High Charity. Has On no re mercy here. <laughs> no mercy. That's what he should be called, <laughs> the Prophet of No Mercy. Bastards. Um, on reach, Dr. Catherine Halsey clashes with Admiral Paragonsky over the methods of <laughs> what? what i missed uh, he said dr kelsey and i say whore oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah, a great actor when well, they carry it i if you if, hate her man if you guys don't know geo hates halsey so that is a testament to the actor who played this character oh yeah she's a fantastic i think actress. she did a great Freaking job. I think that she did a great job villain wise. She did a King Joffrey's top lever work, you know. Yes, like the, the last person that I remember made me hate his guts so much was that kid that did King Joffrey on Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. That kid is good, man. Like, he yes. makes you hate him. Like, he did his, he did his role. Halsey did the same thing, <laughs> plus, I with, with the animation too of Halo. That backstory just feeds into more of my hate to the character. <laughs> I, I got to say that based on the people in command in the human I, like military structure, I, I don't blame the Covenant for wiping out Reach. <laughs> they all needed to die. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anyway, on Reach, Dr. Catherine Halsey <laughs> clashes with Admiral Paragonsky over the methods of Halsey's work on a new type of AI based on her own brain patterns, <coughs> Cortana. <coughs> um, after Quan refuses to cooperate, <coughs> after Quan refuses to cooperate with the UNSC, um, by cooperate they mean. Oh, I, we think you should go go on live broadcast and tell everybody how wonderful the Spartans were to come and save your poor sorry ass. And it's like, uh, you know, this is the first time the USNC has actually done anything for us. So I don't really want to do that. Well, My father people was like, we want to be screwed up. 
by the yeah, other my, 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 selling their fucking resources. My, my, so father who, <laughs> my father, who you let die, um, wanted us to be, you know, independent. So that's what I want to do. So I'm not going to tell them that. Oh, we don't don't want to tell them what we want you to tell them. Oh, well, you can die. Yeah, yeah. you guys aren't the good guys. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yep. um, after Quan refuses to co cooperate with the UNSC by being their mouthpiece, um, the Master Chief is ordered to execute her. Yeah, good guys. Mm. Um, he defies the order and rebels, earning Quan's trust by taking off his arm and helmet when she threatens him with his rifle unsc captain jacob keys orders the master chief to be taken into custody you will recognize a lot of these names from the game uh the master chief touches the keystone again which disables uh power in the base while restoring power to the ship convenient hey that's a that's a really good mcguffin that one allowing him and kwan to escape in the process the master chief discovers that he he had drawn the keystone as a child, suggesting that his past is connected to it. So there you go. That is episode one, Contact. Oh. <laughs> um, so, Gio, I take your favorite character is Dr. Helsey, then. In part, yeah, yeah, in part, yeah. And, uh, I always say, I always say, hate is stronger emotion than love. So you could say. <laughs> Did you guys know that she almost played Cortana in the show? And I am glad she didn't, for two reasons. I am not. Well, I'm glad she didn't play Cortana because number one. We get a, 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 an actor that can perform to this level and show how Dr. Healthy really is by making anyone that watches this show hate her as much as we do. Yep. But the other reason why is because Jen Taylor got to play Cortana. And that is really freaking exciting to me. She is the real Cortana in the games. And it was interesting to watch her in, in the behind the scenes um, because she would actually, of course, we don't get to see her in this episode. We get to see her farther out. But it's interesting to see they actually put her post-production and she had to be in the, uh, in the scene uh, with them, like away from the camera. So they can put her after. Okay. Uh, it's just interesting how they filmed it. But I do have to say, I I was fanboying the fact that she is actually in this show. Uh, you were you guys... fanboying? That never happens. <laughs> <laughs> how do you guys feel about that? I mean, is it is it just me that I'm so excited the original Cortana is playing? I mean, my ears are thanking the producers. Because every time she talks, I hear the original Cortana. Oh yeah, you want to you want to keep that in for um, continuity, I think. I mean, playing Hello Infinite, we don't have that anymore. Yeah. Well, she she does come up eventually, but yeah, I, yeah, I have enough full time, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now we had this other cute little girl that looks like somebody. It looks like. Alita actually, like her eyes are just way too augmented. So it's like <laughs> they try to make it not, not look natural human too. I think. Cortana but she said looked... she's Cortana. She's a yeah. copy of her. I mean, any other <laughs> bitch that they put in the fucking virtual there, it's Cortana, right? <laughs> it's like uh... there's not there's not an importance to the individuality of Cortana. I'm Cortana. Yeah, you remember what I said seven years ago? No, I'm Cortana now. And then some yeah. Buddhist crap probably like, it's the now the important thing, not the past. So it doesn't matter. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, Anywho. I, I find interesting um, the fact that this, that the, the actors they 
picked to uh, play the silver team. You know, John, uh, Riz, Vanek, and Kai. They, I don't know if you guys knew, but they actually went through two types of training. Um, the first one is to bulk up. Um, I think Pablo said at one point that um, he was always, uh, you know, that lean muscle. Yep. Um, and someone that is used to do lean muscle, it's, you know, it's just different to try to change your routine to then pick up, like, you know, get bulk. Um, he found that slightly challenging. Um, yep. But uh, it, it's really interesting to see how they're like, they all were bulked up for this TV show. And and the second training they got, they get they actually got military training. Um and and from what much I saw needed. I'm sorry? Much needed, probably. Well, you know, if we're gonna with do that it. armor sweating like crazy, you need to have some resistance to that thing. Uh, you'll be every five minutes. <gasps> well, that's a that's an interesting thing because if you see them on the behind the scenes. Uh, they, you know, when they're doing the military training, obviously they're doing it with, um, wait, wait. I think it was a mock-up of the, of the suit, but when they were doing exercise to bulk up, they had, uh, weight equivalent to the weight of the suit they, they were going to uh, wear. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's still, I, I think I, I still feel that it's still challenging. Once they're there filming with all that equipment put on, especially when they can't see almost nothing through those, uh, you know, through the helmet. Yeah, true. And I mean, that helmet is is actually more open when it comes to the visible kind, uh, kind of like field of vision compared mm -hmm. to something like a mask that just have like the eye holes or they have the hole somewhere else. So I mean, at, at least that, that sense the prop is helpful that mm -hmm. it's like a big glass you know but it's still it's not something to get used to it it's just like the actor said pablo in the interview like your social cues and like communication can be constrained but at the same time there's a lot of bandages to to it so okay. it has to, duality on it just to put it in perspective uh pablo's uh armor was uh reported to weight 50 pounds uh, Bentley, uh, he plays Vanek 134. Um, his um, armor was reportedly weighing about 66 pounds. Um, that's a lot. But if you <laughs> if you compare it to the Mjolnir battle suit, they're supposed to weigh a thousand pounds. Yeah. It's like here so, you go in your armor. Yeah. It's called the <laughs> So basically, I mean, what they what they were wearing, um, that the actors were wearing, weighs the same as my son. So, <laughs> oh wow, they were basically carrying my son around on them. Wow, and I've carried him to bed. That's quite heavy. Uh, you, it, it, will, <laughs> it will wear you out pretty quickly. I agree. Yeah. The sixty six pounds is heavy. <laughs> uh, it's okay. It's, 30, it's roughly thirty kilos. Yeah, it, it's actually listed here, um, and, and what I'm reading is 30 kilograms. Hmm. I, I just I just said pound automatically because you know yeah. we're backwards. Well, I'm I'm talking to <laughs> the rest Morica. of the Morica. I'm talking to the rest of the world here who has a measurement system. <laughs> Morica. So, we're backwards. Uh, we're backwards. I'm sorry. We'll just let you do. We'll pounds and you centimeters, do. pounds and inches. Hey, Gio, you know when people say Australia is backwards? No, it's us. Imperial. <laughs> We're the what backwards one. I'm curious, Lord. <laughs> I did logistics for 10, more than 14 years, bro. So trust me, I know. Every time I will talk to a colleague across the world, they're like, no, put it in centimeters and pounds. Or kilos. <laughs> Um, another just, thing ima I just imagine a world, guys, where everything was in a factor of 10 and it was easy to count. And One, you didn't have to remember two. any weird conversions. <laughs> it's like, 
Oh, that's that's 10 times that. Oh, that's 10 times that. Wow, yeah. there's a progression here. How about <laughs> that's 10 times that? <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> No, but you know, Ray, you don't understand. I want to measure everything by my iPhone. How many iPhones long is oh, this? Right, right. You get it? So like if I measure my device here, my switchboard, it's about, you know, two iPhones long. I don't and... matter, man. Like I see this iPhone, I'm like, oh, this is like almost one. Like I am maybe twice that size. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> No, no, we're not going there. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, you know what? I have to ask this because I, I can't remember. I, I don't know if you guys have seen. What do you ever Galaxy, remember, bro? All the other previous Halo. Um, For all of you who are listening and not watching the uh, the YouTube video that is going to come out a month from uh, the release of this audio, um, Ray is actually showing us a meme that is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Six Ray, to you seven wanna, washing machines. <laughs> you want to explain that? <laughs> Ray, well, you way know, to measure. weird Christ. measurements. Hey, you just reminded me of it when you said you want to measure things in iPhones. It's just a... <laughs> Uh, so anyway, apparently you measure sinkholes in the U.S. in washing machines. <laughs> a sinkhole roughly the size of six to seven washing machines has closed the northbound lanes of State Line Road near 100th Street in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, bro. I oh, think wow. that my house is like 55 washing machines square feet. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I almost died when I when I. What's your driveway it. size? We 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 need Wait, Elon Musk to be measuring, machines. um, you know, deceleration in washing machines. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're approaching the planet Mars. We're decelerating at seventeen washing machines per second. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Bro. Oh, nice. Hey, you know, if, if if NASA is listening, hey, you know. Um, there you go. We got a brand new measurement for you. <laughs> Thank you, Kansas City. Uh, how many washing machines is uh, Artemis One away from the moon right now? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, is Artemis Jesus One Christ. landing something, or are they just doing an orbit? Uh, they're it's it's unmanned, and uh, yeah. they're just basically testing the the um, everything that need that is needed for Artemis Three. To carry humans and la and finally land on the moon. I'm I'm asking because they did a couple of Apollo missions where they just orbited the moon and then came back because they were just making sure that bit worked before they did the whole landing thing. I believe I they are uh, they are doing. Um, I think they're orbiting. Uh, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah, I, I felt sorry for those astronauts that you know went all the way to the moon and weren't allowed to touch down. It's like, what the fuck? Why are we? Yeah. We came all this way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that a long way. It is. A random aside, um, did you know there's only been 24 people in the history of mankind that have seen the Earth as a complete circle, as like the complete circumference of the Earth? Wow. 24 that's people. Crazy. I mean, and I mean. And they were all Americans, I think. Pretty sure. Wow, <laughs> uh, that that's insane. You know, and, and we spoke about this in, in previous shows. I think everybody deserves to see that because that changes you. And, and I think you become a better human uh, once you see that. That's well, it makes you realize that that's we're all connected, and all all this nation stuff and all this us against them stuff is a complete load of crap. We all live on a tiny little marble in the middle of this massive blackness and we should just stop fighting with each other and get on with what needs to happen. It's really, it's if you think about it, it's, it's very scary too. Um, I mean, you can quote uh, William Shartner the last time that he was there, you know, what he said. But regardless of, you know, that is just visualize the only home we ever known in the blackness of nothing, there is just nothing. And you're looking out there and you see this, it, you know, we're, we're, you feel very lonely. Uh, and, and, you know, I haven't even been there, but I can only 
it's I can only imagine how scary it would be. So how do you know so, what it's supposed to feel? Just visualize it. You know, there's nothing there. Black. Just black and nothing. And you see then that, the man. blue planet right there. What's what's more amazing is that considering the technology of the sixties that they didn't lose more people um, doing what they did. I mean, it, space is not nice. You, it will not be kind to you. Anything goes wrong, you're, you're generally stuffed. So, uh, yeah. Space is nice. It just doesn't have manners. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I need a Spartan suit. <laughs> that way you don't have to show me your poker face. Yeah. <laughs> like whenever so, whenever I do have a joke, it just doesn't move at all. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> um Did you say poker you face or joker face? Oh, sorry, I might have mixed that up. <laughs> oh, I said poker face. Like right. Lady Gaga pop 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 poker face. Well poker he, he face. does he does like the Joker, so you know. It's mm. kind of hard to tell there, so. Uh, he'll um, need a little bit more madness to get to the Joker levels. <laughs> so what I was going to say before I got interrupted by all those um, washing machines. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've been, and, and hear me out here. I've been trying to remember in every other uh, thing that I have seen from Halo, live action or anime or whatever. And I'm trying to remember if there has been a in, in any of those where it is illustrated how Reached looked like. And I can't remember. So I, I'm going to say, you guys, if you listen and you know, please reach out. Let me know. I'm going to go out and say that this is the best representation of what Reached look like in this IP. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I was really, really excited to see it. Because especially when you, when you read the books and you hear the descriptions and you see how it was before the Covenant. Remember, this was supposed to be in the timeline prior to Halo Combat Evolve. Um, this is prior of then discovering the Halo. Um, so at that time, during Halo Evolve, Reach had already, already been destroyed. So why I'm saying all this is because I was really, really excited to get to see Halo, uh, I mean, uh, Reach, in, in a live action setting. Where prior to this, it, it, it have taken a lot of imagination uh, from, you know, the books that I have read. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think? I mean, you guys played the game. So in the game is mentioned too that, you know, they're, they're the guys destroyed. So how do you feel about this? I really liked it. It reminded me of um, Yorktown Starbase in um, Star Trek Beyond, it had that really futuristic, high-tech, well-built aesthetic that, that you, know, you know, you, you used to see in those 70s paintings of um, sci-fi cities and stuff. But That actually you know, never came to be real. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, well, this, this was visually fully realised. And, yeah, I... I it was one of the things that really stuck in my head from watching this episode uh, because, you know, I only watched this episode about 12 hours ago. But, um, yeah, I, it was one of the things that impressed me. I was I was very impressed with the expansive um, CGI sort of locales with the, the o overhead sweeps and stuff that they were doing. But you, uh, always, you always stay with that desire that your microwave will look like an egg, right? Rounded. And that the car, the car that you will have today will be like, uh, like Jackson's car, and that you will have a mate that oh. is like Robotine. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Wasn't but, yeah. that supposed to be twenty twenty four or twenty twenty three, twenty twenty two? I didn't even remember, bro. I was just irritating Ray to piss him off. 
<laughs> you didn't piss me off. You can't piss me off with that. I'm I'm too mellow these days. Ah, you have your good. opinion. I have mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me correct myself. It was 2062. Ah, sorry. <laughs> But I, I, I mean, I mean, what Ray was was saying. I mean, they did a good job. Yeah, they, they did a good job, uh, kind of modernizing that uh, view, and it was not as antiquated as it was showing, which was advanced back when the game was done. Uh, it would look antiquated now if they would have done that for the for the show. So yeah, they did a good job, also like modernizing that too. I would say, right? Yeah. Speak, speaking of dates, do you realize that? Now is when um, the full dive headgear in Sword Art Online is released. I'm waiting like, that now. Day, like day, man. Let's, let's go make the lines right now. <laughs> There's only 10,000 people are allowed to get trapped in that thing. You think, let me ask you, Ray, because I mean, I think that you're going to be just as crazy about it as I am, probably. Uh, but what I'm wondering is, and I've been looking at videos like the last week already about this, uh, is it going to be. Uh, like retros, well, like I could use it on my Oculus Quest too, even though I don't have full dive experience. I could do it with my gear. Um, uh, oh, it's exclusive. Well, we're talking about in in this storyline. It's supposed to be now that it gets released, not not, yeah. not in real life. <laughs> yeah, but also actually, there's videos. There's, there's videos that they're actually working oh, on. Oh, yes. There is. As a matter of fact, this a guy in Japan has done a recreation for the Oculus. Mm -hmm. uh, they used the hand tracking, which is really awesome. Yeah. Of the, uh, yeah, like, in the exactly. Company. Exactly. And, and I think they're working on a on a uh, Oculus version yeah. of, of the actual game, which is so freaking cool. And uh, and someone actually has released one that is is actually the very first uh, multiplayer on virtual that it's the closest thing that we have to sort out online is yep. available right now. But I want sort out online. Zenith, uh, <laughs> Zenith, I think, or Zenith is the game called. Yes, so, I think it's Zenith. That's the yes. closest thing, you know. I it's think Geo really cool. wants to be trapped inside a sword art online so he can bring the chaos to them. No, not really. You just escape with this fucked up reality into a less fucked up reality. Ray, I think <laughs> I think it's gonna be a red player. Yeah. I think he's <laughs> I think he's I think he's gonna be part of um mm. uh laughing oh, uh, uh, laughing coffin, yes. Laughing yes. Coffin. <laughs> well, even if I get killed, it will be a laughing coffin. No, you you that's the thing, you're not gonna get killed. You're Captain Chaos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot kill Chaos. Like people will look at me like, what's a guy going alone to the dungeon? And I'm like, yeah, you better don't come. <laughs> I don't even need to survive. Everything dies around me. <laughs> You're a PK. Isn't that what they call him, PK? PK. Yeah. Play a killer. <laughs> I will be even an NCP killer. NCP. I really am. <laughs> NPC. NPC killer, yeah. <laughs> I actually am. Um, not ashamed of that. Sorry, NPCs. No discrimination. Not even for them. <laughs> I would love to see uh, Geo as a um, uh, in a D and D game. That that sounds dangerous. <laughs> what do you mean, bro? Last time, the first time I ever played D and D, you had me laying down on my back for five days to discover I was in a freaking cave. <laughs> But that was just a <laughs> trial run. We didn't play with other players. So. Yeah, I probably would have done way worse. <laughs> okay, so Ray is going to show us something for all of you who are listening and not watching to the YouTube oh. video that we'll release in a month. For some, for some reason, it's showing not the bottom part of him, but basically he's doing oh, the superhero landing. Yeah, it's showing the superhero <laughs> landing. So. Oh, oh my God! That is, I would have to say, one of the scenes where I stood up and start screaming. I just wonder now that you said fifty pounds on the arm, or like how many times he tried to stand up for that position. <laughs> 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 no, I can't. 
<laughs> yeah, that it, you know it was challenging. Doesn't matter how many times they oh, exercised. Bro. And I mean, I wonder, like, if in in fact through the show the armor is supposed to fictionally, fictionally weight a thousand pounds, that should have made a freaking hole that you will get petroleum out of it when he jumped from the fucking ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, really? I thought that they would drop, like, like max stack from, like, for Cyberpunk, like, in uh, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. But not just, like, <laughs> fucking jump out of there, like, boom, boom. You know? Well, you know, it never it's happened not, like, in the game. It's not, like, gravity stuffed in, this, in, in, the, in this planet, neither. Module going. It never happened in the game either, so you know. Yeah, no, actually, they would shoot him in pots that would like land like I don't know, man. Like, well, the even in that... the pots with a thousand pound inside a pod, you know, just break just it, imagine. break it, and steal, he will get squashed because that thing doesn't like that thing gets a parachute, but it actually crashes into the ground, mm -hmm. you know. So it doesn't seem quite safe either way you want to put it. And, and that's the reason why the Spartans have to thank Halsey for that. Why? Because the the program the where she stole the kids to inject them and and alter their their bone and muscle mass is the only reason why they can stand wearing that armor. As a matter of fact, I have actually read, uh, I can't remember which of the books. I read so many of those books and I can't remember which one is which. Because the story for me just runs into one long story. But if you have a human. Excuse me, Mr. I like them get all. into No, no. <laughs> <laughs> if you get a human into the Mjolnir suit, um, just moving an arm, it, it would destroy their arm and their rib cage on how, yeah. like, you know, they actually go in depth about this on the animation that looks like oh, the yes, animation. They, they go yeah. in. I mean, there's a guy that does like the new Dragon Ball animations, and he did one. And when you look at Spartan fighting outside the armor with, I think, a Covenant uh, Elite, it's like you're seeing a freaking side Super Saiyan fighting. Like he punches shit that just flies like supersonic speed. So mm -hmm. like they are not normal. Trust me. No, I mean, I feel sorry for the gear they grab. So we're like, <laughs> oh my god, the kind of scary movie. That was a great <laughs> scene, actually. When, when, um, uh, Master Chief drops from the condor, uh, into the, into the compound because you, you see the, the ship flyer go, they go that's a UNSC ship they're like oh shit they're coming to attack us too uh, we're getting attacked by aliens now we're going to get attacked by the USNC and, and then you see a figure drop out of this ship and it's not a short drop it's several hundred Lord, meters yes, yes. It's, it's, it's like um, you know several hundred yards and and it just goes poof. and you're right there should have been a crater yes. you have just done yeah. a superhero landing in the ground was like what the fuck? I don't care. No, there should have been a crater. Yeah, um, I, the moon. <laughs> but, but you know, you you see you see a a, a green tinged figure dropping from a from from a spaceship um, onto the ground with no no parachute, that was, no, that was more than no deceleration, you. nothing. You go, yeah, that's Master Chief. I know who that is. <laughs> yeah, and 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 that's the scene where I stood up and started yelling, yeah, 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 like, like fuck physics. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, my my mind was saying, you know, fuck faces. <laughs> it's Master Chief. And you know what's the best part? Then he look at the girl and he no goes, like, you see the height? I'm Master Chief, but at night they call me Master G's. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um, Spartan yeah. in the streets, lover in the sheets. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I love that one. Oh my god! I remember that one. But, I'm gonna do this for Master Chief on my arm. That says that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gonna be my my ass cheek, actually. Oh, my god. <laughs> oh man, I don't want to see that. Okay, sure if, that. if we got if we got one thousand more uh, followers, when we reach how many followers we have now? Mm. Seven thousand. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let me see. Okay, if we reach twenty thousand followers, I'm gonna. Make a tattoo with my ass cheek and publish and publish it. <laughs> that says Spartan the what is this? Spartan in the streets, lover in the sheets. Yeah, it's gonna say that and it's gonna have a master cheese like with a blankie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so if you wanna see that, go ahead. 
and stuff. We should do a hashtag. The the Spartan challenge. Instead of an idea, I would do it for the podcast, man. (laughs) Oh my god. My ass cheek, and everybody's gonna see my ass cheek showing it. This is Halo. Look my boom boom. <laughs> oh my god! To, to change the subject a little bit, I am. Um... Why you don't like talking about my ass? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see it either. So... <laughs> don't worry, I went to you sleeping, so I, you just open your eyes and look at it. <laughs> oh my god, my, my jaw <laughs> hurts. I do it. I do it. I do it like Rachel for friends. So it's not gonna be all the way down in my ass. It's just like all the way on the top, so I just gotta put my pan a little bit down. G- G- Gio, if we if we don't change the topic soon, we'll have to change the name of the podcast to <laughs> Gio's Butt Cheek Remnant. Hey, <laughs> you don't want to get that deep into my butt. <laughs> to the remnant? No, 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 no I don't. No. You gotta go beyond no. cheeks. You gotta go beyond uh, cheeks for that. Uh, <laughs> at least we're explicit. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, God. oh my God. I got well, so excited about talking about my ass, man. Let's just <laughs> But what I was going to say was. <laughs> Change his name from Captain Curse to Ass Master. <laughs> Master Cheese, man. Oh, Master Cheese. <laughs> oh, my God. Master, che- Master Cheek. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool name. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, what I was going to say is I really like how they um, they illustrate the Spartans. And, and there's a scene on this episode that I was like, wow. A normal, po- a normal uh, any person, a normal person, when you fall, you know, you're going to have some screams. Do, you, do we all agree in this? Yeah. If if you have well, a well, with, with the, when the girl, the bad girl came out and like well, she then, got undressed and shit, I was go, like, tap that ass, bitch. Before, <laughs> before you go into that, just imagine maybe a five, six story wall, and you falling from that all the way to the ground on the what, rubble. <laughs> what is the normal reaction? You gonna ah, 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 me? Me probably the way that she just bounced and I go out, 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 out. <laughs> no, no, but let's let's talk about this for a minute because I ha- there's a point behind it. Um, I would think we have the the what is that movie? The famous movie screen that they been recycled in the world. The the help, not Wilhelm Wilhelm Wilhelm. Yeah. yeah. So a normal person will scream. And if you're not careful, you have little girl screams. Because, you, know, you know. I cannot do it anymore. It will be too loud. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see Kai falling, and if you pay attention to the way she screams, even the scream was badass. It's scary to see a girl falling and going like, oh, you're like, shit. <laughs> Is that a girl? <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. You know, it, it, even Bannock, it, it Rez, or even John, you know, they they they, they have displayed the um the Spartans in in my opinion, true to the video game. Where they're just badass, doesn't matter what they do. And Ray, you'll be in it for a surprise because later on we get to see more scenes where the Spartans are doing normal things that humans would do, but plus the badass. And it's just so much fun. So you're telling me that they're even badass on the toilet? You know what? I I never seen it, but I wouldn't be surprised. Epic pooping? <laughs> Sumo bathroom sounds. Right, okay. I'm, I'm oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop now. You go on for the whole night of that shit. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, rails. Who need rails? <laughs> no, man. I was gonna ask the Robin and guy pooping. I, I, I make a joke. I, I, 
I make a joke that I expect you to ignore and you completely run with it. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. When it comes to poop, man, I'm on with that shit. No pun intended. <laughs> but, you know, all, all joking aside, you guys seen... What do you guys think about that scene? I mean, am I the only one thinking about this? And how they, you know, you can only... This is just the beginning. That scene when Kai falls, it's just yeah. the beginning. I like it, man. I like all the, of it, to be honest, you know? And every little detail of the first episode in the whole series is good. I mean, there's details like, I didn't know that they could not taste food, for example. And that kind of enhances that that information behind the universe on the IP, you know? Like, they show a lot of things that Spartans feel or perceive differently than humans due to these military enhancements. Uh, but uh, we don't think about it because we're more caught up in the action and what's going on, really, you know? This is not, per se, important for the mission that is being done, but it, those little details that make it more real or believable. I like the fact that um, the room that... Um, uh, is it Quan? Is that the girls? Yeah, Quan. 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 The, the room that Quan was being kept in on the, on the ship um, when they were heading back to Reach... Um, uh, Master Chief comes in and he does the diagnostic and he goes to walk out and um, Quan's talking to him and he turns around and you look at his height and he's like, he's going to smack his head on the, the bulkhead at the top of the door because he's that bloody tall. Um, <laughs> according to according to Professor Google, six feet, 10 inches, which is um, in real measurement, uh, 2.08 meters. So um, a very tall, very tall guy. Yeah. Like you don't yeah. want to screw around with that. <laughs> I, I like the way that he says that he's, you know, he's checking to, he's not feeling well. Mm. He's he's putting his arm in and is. I can't remember the exact quote, but he's saying like he's he's scanning his uh, bio components and looking for abnormalities. Yeah, isn't that your way of saying you not feel well? He looks yep. at her, looks back, and says, "Yeah." <laughs> I like more. I, I mean, it's, it's just so many little details. I mean, but but it was interesting to see that new perspective of what Spartans' life is like, you know. And I think that the series sheds a lot of light on that on that part of the universe of Master Chief and Halo as a whole. Yeah, I gotta say that I gotta say that I was a little bit disappointed that the humans were so useless. I would have liked them yeah. to be, you know, three or four of them to focus on one of the elites and take yes. it down. Just to I say agree with you. Humans are yeah. completely useless. I mean, they had heavy machine guns because Master Chief yeah. picked up. I mean, Master Chief and... picked up that thing and killed a bunch of them with it. So you I was know, like, yeah. what the fuck? My you know? Saying, my dad was saying the same thing. It's like, isn't that the gun that guy was using? Why is he killing? Why is the yeah. Master yeah. Chief killing with that gun when the guy couldn't do a thing? Exactly. Yeah. I think that I think that, that was a mistake of glorifying Spartans. Yeah, and, yep, and, and, and he escapes him there. You know, like there was not a single elite down until the Spartans came in. There should have been at least one or two if there were twenty. You know, yeah. because there were fire going them, through. I would have liked to see four or five humans be able to take down one elite. That that would have made a lot more sense. But at, at least harm it somehow, right? Yeah, because it was like they like they couldn't scratch them. You know. So, so they it, it like, was almost like a weapon in the hands of a Spartan meant that the, the it ignored yeah. the energy field. Exactly, it doesn't. And to me, it's that that's just nonsense. You know, it, it doesn't compute in my head. Like, what's the difference? The bullet is a bullet. And, it doesn't matter who who yeah, shoot it. Exactly. In it. This is no exactly. most wanted. The movie, like they go like, and the bullet goes like. <laughs> and, <know>? even, <laughs> and even if it's even if it's a, it, it's got to do with perfect aim. Um, the whole point of having an energy shield is to cover those bits that aren't properly armored. So, you know, shooting them in the face and blowing the heads off, um, no, the energy shield should, should still stop the bullets. You don't have an energy shield over a well-armored component unless, and no unless energy shield over a soft component. It. But if mm -hmm. you're yeah. holding it, you'll blow your brains out. <laughs> no, I mean, you, you see the humans with their, you know, AK um, 10,000s or whatever they are by that stage, yeah. Um, going daka 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 daka, and you see bing 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 off the energy field, but then a, a Spartan pulls out a weapon, and goes da, 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 and it goes straight through the energy field and kills them. It's like, yep, wait a second, do you know how this works? I don't think you do. It's a kind um, of magic, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Spartan, so my bullets ignore your energy field. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, the thing, the things they did right, like those swords, the the elite swords were great. Oh, the energy weapons, yeah. The, oh, yeah. They they look really spot on. And this Haters is going to hate, but I mean, better than the, a lightsaber. The, the, the kids that were on those that drugs from the root of that plant that that were running around, and the 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 shots just came out of out of the bushes, and and they just blew into pieces. Like, um, yep. Exploding teenagers. It's like, okay, this is pretty freaking brutal. <laughs> you know, do you do you agree that this was gory and yet not at the same time? No, nah, it's not gory to me. I think it, I didn't it's gory. It, if you like... pause it, it was so quick that um, you knew what was happening, but you didn't have time to be shocked by it because it was so quick. Okay, I'm using... gonna rewind because I want you to show me where you see guts outside of a body. Well, the thing is that it's um one aren't caught it, out. It's a plasma yeah. weapon. And plasma will burn beyond recognition. So, so it's like a horse pooping on the street with a sack on his butt. So there you don't is see the poop, scene. really. <laughs> <laughs> there's, <laughs> what a <laughs> there's a scene when one of the girls gets shot in the leg, and all you see is the stump, the bloody stump. That's yeah, gore. The, the no, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Kept chup all over of somebody's face is not gore. Gore is seeing where did that came from. Where is the blood? Where is the arm or the leg missing out of the body? Well, when the girl got shot in the face, uh, Quan had a fistful of blood on her face. But they didn't show the girl's face or her head. Exactly, because he got burned with a plasma weapon. Yeah, but I couldn't see. <laughs> at least let me see the neck and whatever else was left popping out of it. Oh, you see the neck? You know, that scored to me. You see you the see neck? No. You see uh, the neck? Possibly. Right, right before she being shot, not after. It, it, Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Ray explained it perfectly. If you pause it, you see the gore. It's way too fast. Okay. I think that they just don't do emphasis on it. Like in gore, they do emphasis on it. Like it would have been a 10, 15 seconds scene, actually, where you exactly. see like gushing. Exactly. You know, exactly. Well, <laughs> that's gore well, the, whole, <laughs> the whole point of energy weapons is that they create a lot of heat. So they can claim that it was cauterizing the wounds. So exactly. you don't get a lot of splatter. I mean, yes. the, the part that gets blown to pieces, you could get splatter, which is why she got blood on her face. Mm -hmm. But the bit that's left, the, this glowing surface where it's been cauterized. So you don't get that. Exactly. Come on, some modern. So basically, so basically, really it's gory. a it's an out for the um, special effects crew, so they don't have to make it super gory. It's pretty freaking obvious that somebody's had like their entire head and part of their chest blown off. So you can cut horrific. somebody in half and, and they gory. can survive it. Yeah, it's uh, horrific but not gory. Depending on where you cut. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the girl who had her legs blown off, she could have uh, survived that. I mean, I mean somebody get um, cut in half. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen with the poop because it's not gonna be. It's gonna be sealed. You know, it's like shit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that girl that the legs got blown off, she couldn't yeah. live if she didn't get shot like this the last time and just get completely blown up. Yeah, yeah that was a clean cut. But you know that I, I just want. <laughs> That's what I want to mention. I mean, some people said, "Well, I don't watch this because it's gory." Well, nah, that's right now to me. It's way too fast. You would have that's to like saying Star fast. Wars is gory. Star Wars is not gory, is it? But you know, I just wanted to bring the question to Ray, for example, and because he's only seen the first episode, and, and see if he agrees with me. Because I, I want to say, yeah, it's gory, but not because for well, that reason, he said. It's just way too fast. You have to actually pause it to see. Yeah. Um, it's it, I wouldn't call it gory more than brutal. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. it's got that, that sort of uh, Warhammer 40K brutal vibe. And the Spartans remind me a lot of uh, Space mm -hmm. Marines in that they're, they're post-human and they've been changed so much that they they don't, feel human anymore they don't act human at least not in the first episode um but uh i i mean yeah this it, it's got a lot of similarities with 40k this universe in that you know you've got alien races and they they're brutal they don't give a crap 
there's no human rights there's no sentient rights um you just wipe everything out that doesn't doesn't suit your purposes um so yeah i mean it's uh it's a harsh realm um don't don't go into this thinking that it's you know friendship is magic and magic is heresy because, because yeah. it's not going to be pleasant <laughs> Um, the covenant is attempting to wipe out humanity. Mm -hmm. Consider them bugs that need squishing. So there's no reason to really wonder religion. why they're trying to kill everything that they find in their way, right? Mm -hmm. Well, from from the games, I remember that um, uh, the Earth is actually a, a holy planet for the covenant. And what the hell are these these uh, evolved apes doing running around our planet? We're going to wipe them out. Mm hmm. That's true. We are a virus. Yeah, that's that's true, true, too. I actually have claimed <laughs> that many times. <laughs> so, yeah, I I is really, the, really, really enjoy is it. The, is the Covenant a virus, too? I mean, they, they're pretty brutal. No, the yeah. Covenant is just sick of their heads. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing with the Covenant. They they have, like, they need to go to a mental asylum or something like that. Cuckoo. They went fanatic ways. <laughs> the, uh, did you guys know the uh, language was created uh, for the show? Language? Nice. Oh, you, you and I had to talk about that. The covenant the language. language. <laughs> Why do you sound so... Your mic somehow went crazy. Yep, it did. But I think okay. no worries. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> uh, so I really, I forgot who actually created that, but I know um, that um, Charlie Murphy, the one that plays uh, Mackie. Okay. Um, and we get to see her briefly on on this uh, episode when she's talking to Mercy. Um, they they actually train her in this language. Um, and oh God, I wish I remember the names. Um, and she would actually ask for recordings, and she would practice it. Um, I think she came out and say that she can kind of speak. Um, uh, Sanguili, is that the name of the? I think Sanguili. I, I might saying it all wrong, uh, but she can she can actually speak it uh, after this. Sanguili. Sanguili. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Professor Google. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to. Uh, let's see. J David Peterson. From uh, UC Berkeley, I believe that's who. So yeah, the, the interesting part is that this is an actual language. Um, obviously, uh, I imagine kind of like what Klingon would be. Um, that or Elvish. Hmm? Or El Elvish. Or Elvish. Yeah, and I find that really cool. You know that that gives. Uh, a chance to the fans, you know, to be able to, you know, uh, have have more immersion into the IP. Did you know that um, at least for quite a number of years, uh, fans of Tolkien would gather around his grave once a year on his birthday and wish him happy birthday in Elvish? Oh, wow. That would be cool. I don't know if they still do it. They might have died out, those peeps. Because they were actually elves. <laughs> but... <laughs> oh wow! Well. So they they went to the western lands. <laughs> <laughs> they, they 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 went back to the elvish, you know, realm. Well, I guess that they were not elves. None of them. They put themselves mm -hmm. back on the shelf. If they were elves, they would still <laughs> singing that shit every year. I, I think probably... I like race better. What do you mean? <laughs> elves in the shelf. Elves in the shelf. <laughs> back in the shelf. <laughs> I have elvish on my tattoos, man. 
Hey, remind people about your tattoo. How, remind people about my tattoo? Yeah, we have to reach uh, how many followers? You said? Yeah, that's 20, true. If, I get, if, I, if we get in the podcast 20,000 followers, how, how does it say the, the, the Spartan, Spartan? Oh. Uh, um, Ray, remind me, remind me. You're going to have to write it down. down. Spot, spot in the streets, lover in the sheets. <laughs> Oh God. Oh, this is too too good. Too good to pass it. Write it down. <laughs> I'm a, the image is gonna be a master chief on the armor doing like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 He's gonna say we're gonna have to have in the podcast more than twenty thousand followers. That's not bad enough, right? No. We'll do a better tattoo for fifty K. Uh, okay. Go. But the tattoo's gonna be on my ass cheek. You guys get to pick which side. Look, I'm now, now what, 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 you, what you do is you do Master Chief doing that for, for 20, 20K, and when we reach 50K, you get Cortana put on the other side. It's oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's going to be do we put Master Aussie? Chief doing this, and it's going to be on my ass cheek saying, Spartan on the streets, lover in the sheets. <laughs> 20, <laughs> 20K. 20K. Where followers. do we put Halsey? Halsey? Yeah, where do we put uh, Halsey? Okay, for, for 100K, that one I'm not going to take a photo <laughs> for, but she's going to be under my balls doing like this, like lifting him up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we are explicit. So. <laughs> I, I thought you might have tattooed it around your butthole or something. I don't know. No, no, man. I'll, I'll give her the oh heavy God. burden. I'll give her the heavy burden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, I'm sorry for asking. When I'm running, <laughs> working out, and sweating, I'm like, I'm like, there you go, bitch. That's what you deserve. <laughs> Dude. Oh, my God. Dude. Man, I'll, <laughs> listeners, I'm sorry. I won't ask those questions again. I'm sorry. Oh, you wanted to get curious. You there you go. Man. Now you're going to ask any hard I shoes. did it again. You opened the door and he had to go there. You know how this works. Robert. Yep, yep. That's Captain Chaos for you. <laughs> no, you know what you were asking for, Robert. Don't put anything on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yep. Captain <laughs> <Chaos. laughs> so um I I guess we reached the point in this podcast where I have to ask that question. That question. You opening another door that you shouldn't open. Big that boy. question. <laughs> <laughs> What are your final thoughts on this episode? When do we get to the season? Okay, no, it's, it, it, we're talking about episode one. Yeah, episode one, yes. <laughs> episode I think one. It's and and I'm, I, I, I'm really curious to hear what Ray... <laughs> oh, I like that. That's what Halsey said. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> we should make that a hashtag. Um... <laughs> Um, I, I really enjoy this. I think this is something that I have been waiting for 20 years. Um, I remember every news and back when, when Bungie was involved, they were saying, okay, there's rumors of a, of a Halo movie coming. It's really excited. Only to hear rumors that says mm -hmm. Microsoft just canned it. And I will get all depressed. And then we get the movies and we get the animation. And it's really exciting. It's really cool. Um, yet, I didn't feel it. And, 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 and I'm kind of curious to see what you guys think. But I'm not saying that it's not good. All the other previous uh, movies and animations that I've seen, they're really good. And they had actually appeased my hunger for the IP. Um, but this one, for some reason, just hit the right spot. And I agree with me. Are, are you talking about this one episode? Or are you talking about the series? Because Well, uh, the, series, the, the series two, um, but I'm just trying to speak based on my feelings on that one day when I watched this episode. Um, and remember, I watched this virtually with my brother. We were on the phone. 
and we were both screaming. And, and getting and banged by your wives. You can swear <laughs> that we were watching the football game. And it was because of that reason. It was 20 years in the making. And although I've seen many other Halo um, movies or animation, that they were good, this one just hit it in the nail. It's it was just amazing that first episode. Um, I mean, I can I I say exactly the same thing about the entire season, and I want more. And although I agree with the creator, and, and well, the creator of the story, not the creator of this, because uh, this is all you know from Halo Four and 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 on. We're talking about 343 Industries. Uh, from Bungie, even the creator um, of the story, back when Bungie created Halo, said that this is not a bad show. I think it was amazing and awesome. And I was so freaking excited that they were able to give me Master Chief uh, uh Master Chief's face on the first episode because I felt I waited long enough and I still remember when they said you know oh we're going to get a movie oh we want to finally see Master Chief because you've never seen it in any of the video games only to be heartbroken when they pulled the plug on the project and I do um I do hear and understand many of the fans have said, okay, they should have saved this for the last episode. I still hold to my gun saying, I waited 20 years. Thank you for giving me this in the first episode. And whoever tells you otherwise, like we try it earlier, you say, I did my time already. Yes, <laughs> I did my time. I did my time like a patient little fan of Halo. And thank you. I wanted that. And you gave it to me. Thank you. So that's my final thought. Who's going to go next? <laughs> oh, I typically don't go first. <laughs> I, just, I feel like... You're the halo evangelist amongst us, so that's fair enough. The halo <laughs> evangelist? Yeah. Angelus is an addictive now. He, he <laughs> goes knocking door to door. Can I tell you about our Lord and Master John One One Seven? So, any final thoughts? Uh, I tell you, man, I just feel sad that I'm almost finishing season one and I'm making the shit out of me. <laughs> you don't understand. We we talk, me and Gio. Uh, lately, we've been talking almost daily. And and he's it's like our bromance is blooming all over again, man. He, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's milking this thing. He doesn't want it to end. I think I, he he almost is watching like five minutes every day. Just no, no, no. I watch it. full episodes, but sometimes I would like <laughs> let me just go back two episodes again, just so I can rewatch him and watch a new one, distracting myself that it's another episode. <laughs> so so but, I'm, I'm gonna I'm be like no more. That- so I'm the only person that's watched the one episode and and no more. So you yeah, guys you're an obedient channel, guy, channeling you're... the whole thing. I'm just a busy guy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but you know that's why I'm trying to limit myself in the comment that I made to just this one episode. Mm-hmm. So it, it's okay if you know whatever comments you have on that one episode. That's actually what we're looking for. So, so that was your final thought, you? Yeah, I mean. I love the series, you know, and I love the, all the games. I haven't finished uh, uh, Infinite. I'm probably not even half of it, but I mean, I watch everything and everything that, that they did on the show stay, uh, to my opinion, it stayed very, very canon to everything else. Which you, and I mean, it shed a lot of light on things that we don't really get to think about. Uh, mostly on that universe that are literally tales that you're like, oh, when you when you watch it, actually happened, you know? And I think it's beautifully made, actually. Uh, I think that they did a great job. Uh, Bungie's opinion doesn't rule over mine. <laughs> I really like that. 
I really like the that show. And I mean, I think it's a, something very, very, very long awaited already. You know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I mean, I was it. thinking like what all the things like Master Chief, you've been waiting to watch your face. There's a couple of things like that in, in the market, actually. Like the suspense of looking at their face or something like that. Who else? I'll think about it. And I'll bring it up later. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'll, I'll suggest everybody that you should watch the show. It's good. What awesome. What is it about? What is it about actors who run around with a helmet on and everybody's excited when they take it off that their first name is always Pablo? I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that... we're going to have to change that. You know, we have to make one and call it Captain Chaos. Yeah. Sparks in the streets, lover in the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I've started a hashtag, haven't I? <laughs> yeah. Uh, dear. So my final comments before we get derailed yet again. Uh, rails? Where were they? I don't, yeah. Don't have I was wondering. Uh, you see some? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> no rails at all. We, we just got the pelican to jump out of. But um, uh, or oh, the condor in this case. But um uh, my final thoughts on this one, just on the first episode, because that's all I've seen, is uh, that um, the aesthetic was really good. Uh, it felt like Halo to me. Um, the Certainly, the they'd done a lot of work on the armor and everything for the Spartans, which looked fantastic. Uh, I think they probably overplayed how good the Spartans were compared to normal humans a little bit in that they were using the same guns, but they got better results out of them. Mm -hmm. Um I would have liked to see the humans not be 100% pathetic, uh, but certainly not good enough to take on 12 or 14 um, uh, elites. elites. Mm -hmm. the, the realization of the elites didn't quite hit the mark for me. I felt like they didn't look really like part of, part of the world. They, did, they didn't feel real enough to me. I don't know why that was exactly, but if I watch the rest of the show, maybe, maybe that'll sort itself out. But certainly... All the special effects of the the backdrops were great. The, the overflies were great. Um, seeing the the city of um, Reach looked really fantastic. Um, the as I said, all of the stuff with the Spartans was fantastic. Um, all the um, heavy tech of the um, uh, USMC. Is it USMC? Um, UMS. Oh. I the, can't remember the, what the acronym is. United Nations Space Command, UNSC. U UNSC, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just used to seeing US everywhere, so I just <laughs> default to that. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it looked really like a functional military um, when all those guys were rocking up to greet the um, – the Condor coming in, that looked very Starship Troopers for, for the 2020s um, and, and look, you know, really solid and, and gave that emotion of, of, a, of a, a strong, organised, well-provisioned military. Um, uh, the story, um, sort of the, the, the main beats of the story felt quite well realised. Uh, the whole thing of, of in the very first episode, Master Chief, Master Chief going rogue didn't to me because in all the games he's so nationalistic and on board and saving humanity and doing all the right things. It just seemed weird that in the first episode he'd go against them. Um, having said that, the the higher ups in the uh, UNSC military were a bunch of assholes, um, which didn't seem to track with the game. They didn't seem to be that bad in the game. So I'm like, this is a bit different and it doesn't didn't sit particularly well with me. Um, it may improve. There may be reasons for it later on in the show, but for the first episode, I'm sort of like, huh? why are they such assholes? Um, but they may have their reasons. I just haven't seen them yet. Um, overall, um, I think I'd give it maybe seven to eight out of ten for the first episode it, my my rating of the entire show would probably be different because there's more more to be seen yet that i haven't seen um it was a good start but it just felt a little 
jangly and a little bit not quite keeping with the the computer games. Uh, but I, after watching it, I did sort of feel like cracking out the old Xbox original uh, and and jumping back into the to the um, the game again from way back when you know the original game, which um, uh, for the reminiscence, the reminiscence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but the um, the original game, I actually had the entire game memorized, and I took a friend through it in uh, four and a half hours. He was he was really impressed. Like, go over here, shoot this guy, jump over here, go jump in this tank, do this, go go back, do this, do that. And he's like, "How do you know all this?" And I'm like, "I don't know. It's just, it, I just it's, it's not experience I mean, anymore. Like, that could be even a trauma already. <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe I'm supposed to be a Spartan in an, in another life. Who knows? <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 good. It's not perfect. It's not spot on, but it, it's quite good. And I'm I'm hoping for for good things as the series progresses. And I'll let you know on Twitter. Oh yeah. And everybody, remember when we make it to twenty thousand followers on Twitter, <laughs> I'm gonna have my ass cheek at the two of. Master Chief like this that says Spartan on the streets, lover in the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> we'll this talk about 50, 50k, but that's going to be another story. We'll make yeah, it the sacrifices time. that we make for our listeners. Huh? Hell yeah, man. Let's see what we get in your ass tattooed. No, probably not. You won't give any to that shit. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Okay, so are we ready for the next segment? Should I make it more 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 followers than twenty thousand? Maybe <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I have enough skin left. <laughs> is he is he getting second thoughts, Ray? <laughs> no, that's fine. I have enough enough ideas for the two. I <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> uh, no one can control the chaos. The chaos will be no. chaos, and it will do what yeah. chaos does. So we'll yeah. just live with it. <laughs> Okay, so here we go, the next segment. Dolls, diamonds, and sci-fi. So, in this segment, I'm sad to say, I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> do you have anything, Ray? I do uh, have something, but for the, the entire season, so maybe next episode that we do on this show, then I'll have something. What about Ray? I've got a few things that I can sort of talk around. Uh, obviously, the the um, show is only new, so it hasn't had a chance to sink into the science, um, uh -huh. uh, the scientist's mind and uh, initiate any ideas of new technology. Um, it's much easier when the sci-fi is close to our current time period that uh -huh. people can um, can extrapolate from it to to bring things into um, reality. Uh, or ideas into reality that, that have come up in the in the IP. Uh, but, of course, um, Halo has been around. The game has been around for two decades. That's plenty of time to uh, to be involved in that. Oh, yeah. um, the, the, the couple of things that I was looking at is they use something, well, I mean, Iron Cannon from Star Wars um, is the thing that, that it, it, it looks the most like. I was actually trying to find out what they call it. But um, Professor Google has failed me, so I, I don't know what the, the weapon is called. But it 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 functions. Its functionality is pretty much like an ion cannon from Star Wars. So it it's an energy weapon that hits a ship and takes out its electronics. And um, uh, I was sort of looking through um, possibilities of what um, might exist or might be being worked on in that area at the moment. Um, and Professor Google says, Ion Cannon, real life. Uh, while true Ion Cannons are still in the realm of science fantasy, there are some ostensibly similar devices that do exist today called negative ion generators. These devices at a sufficient size and capacity could, in theory, interfere with the electronics of a distant target. So uh, basically they are working on it, but they haven't got there yet. So we may be seeing um, something like that in in some years into the future, but uh, at, at present we don't have uh, uh, any iron cannons that have, uh, are known about in the world the world's militaries. Um, of course, um, military equipment these days is highly electronic, 
uh, often uh, very complicated and unable to function without uh, computer guidance and all that sort of thing. Uh, and of course, you know, you know, drones and, and and all sorts of delivery systems that are unmanned obviously have to have uh, a high amount of electronic guidance or they wouldn't function properly. And, and if you could hit them with a uh, some sort of um, negative ion uh, stream that could disrupt their electronics and drop them out of the sky, then uh, you have a way to uh, to stop these things from doing what they do. If you can find them, you got to be able to find them first. Yeah, that that takes a breath, and while he's taking a breath, Gene Carlo jumps to the exact next thing he was going to say. So, um, <laughs> while we don't have uh, ion cannons uh, or energy weapons that, that function in that capacity mm. at the moment. Uh, there is quite a simple method for disrupting electronics, and it occurs pretty much any time somebody detonates a nuclear bomb, and that is um, electromagnetic Magnetic pulse. pulse. Yeah, you, my young master chief just going like, <laughs> 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 and then he just flashes in the, in, the, in the ground like, because <laughs> he cannot even stand up. <laughs> and that that was the big thing that was like oh um you've got to launch your nukes first and you've got to you want to get them there before the other people manage to launch theirs because if you do you could knock out their electronics and they won't be able to launch their nukes and then you win but of course it takes time for icbms to reach their target and there'll be a cross launch before they do because they'll be picked up so actually nuking someone before they can get their nukes off is very unlikely in a nuclear scenario um, but it has been considered the tactical nuclear weaponry, like small. I was thinking of a solution for that, but I'm not sure that because I don't want to give any terrorist idiot ideas. <laughs> no, no. But but tactical nukes, which is you know small scale yeah. nuclear devices, could be used as an EMP generating weapon to take out the electronics of, of an area. Uh, enabling then um, uh, disruption of military capabilities that are highly electronic, and then other forces can move into that area once the EMP dies down and, and take That's out. Why I trust my boy and my sword, man. They won't fail me. Um, so <laughs> yeah, um, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> oh, wow. you, you, you you know a standard chemical weapon, aka a gun doesn't have any electronics in it so it doesn't give a shit <laughs> but just just letting you know that as an australian who has no guns i'm a sniper to an man i'm gonna be with my bowl like three meters away three meters, three meters? yeah no, we don't miss. <laughs> no, we don't miss. <laughs> and miss <laughs> three three meters you should uh, be sure you've got it sure wrong it. no i better use this word I don't try 30 know. try 30 meters you'll be more successful i uh, know man i mean come on man the closer you are the easier that is to hit the target this is true <laughs> uh, but when, when they can take a two-step and and like face palm you uh i think it's a little like a computer like this is true <laughs> mm. Oh, but, but yeah, um, small-scale nuclear devices have been long considered a good way of uh, EMPing an area. Um, so if you could sneak one in uh, and then detonate it rather than launch it and make it really obvious, you, you could have a first strike capability to um, damage the capacity of an enemy to then uh, retaliate. Uh, of course, um, there's been a lot of work done not necessarily hugely successfully to create hardened electronics which uh, are not so susceptible to EMP, but um, uh, it's not easy to do. But the way apparently. that you sneak that in as you go, you have some tackle bells, and then you go, come in, and then you have the nuclear <laughs> launch happening on the toilet. Blah! Is Captain Chaos giving ideas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would die for them to try. We'll be laughing at somebody having uncontrollable diarrhea. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think all of this stuff is more in the realms of the world's militaries rather than. Um, what do you say? That, that, that military um, mind don't, don't poop and have the area. Yes, they do too. <laughs> you done? <laughs> Ray's face is like I'm defeated. I give up. You done now? <laughs> I'm just I'm just letting him go till he winds down and then. I'll just, I'll just... 
there's no point there's no point fighting this it's chaos you can't win against it you just let it go it oh, down. God. oh yeah, yeah this is that a point this is the wisdom of age ladies and gentlemen just there's no point fighting <laughs> it. atomic in control of diarrhea the wisdom of the <laughs> Comic flatulence. Okay. <laughs> um, we have a okay. conversation of six-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we explicit this joke is for adults only. No, but there's some no. adults that like jokes. <laughs> <laughs> this okay. is the experience of, of, of dealing with a nine-year-old with an overactive imagination. You just let it go. <laughs> Oh wow! Well. <laughs> so yeah. I, I so, think it, safe to say the only good idea I got was my Master Chief tattoo right now. Yeah, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, actually, looking that. forward to that. <laughs> please, please, everybody, sign up and become a follower <laughs> so, that can, so that we can see this happen. I want to see. It. Yeah, I want to see that happen too. <laughs> you see two guys that want to see my ass now. No, I want to see it happen. I <laughs> Are you gonna see it happen? It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen in my ass. Are you gonna see it happen? Then? <laughs> ah, got you. <laughs> you both Let's come in over my that. butt. <laughs> yeah, I think he's cheeky enough without this. <laughs> anyway, so the other thing that I was looking into, thank you, Professor Google, is um, uh, combat suits, like um, armored exoskeletons, that sort of thing, for military purposes. Um, we're a long yeah. way off a spot. We're a long way off a Spartan suit by the looks of things. Um, they're attempting to create um, powered exoskeletons that help soldiers in lifting and carrying because apparently a lot of soldiers get back yeah, problems from um, from the work that they have to do, not necessarily, you know, like um, in combat, but all the work involved around combat, like logistics and preparation of like foxholes and all that sort of stuff. That it's back breaking work quite literally. And they're looking at powered exoskeletons as a way to help uh, reinforce people who are doing the manual labor in the army to uh, enable them to, you know, not, not go out with a bad back, uh, which uh, mm -hmm. apparently happens quite a lot. So that is being worked on, but it's not a combat suit per se. It's more just a, a support suit for logistics and, um, and and battlefield preparation and things like that. But who knows? Um, give give it another two decades. Uh, hopefully, I'm around to comment on it. But um, actually, yeah, we Boston want to Dynamics. Boston Dynamics actually owns a. It's it's a part of the company that does robots like the Atlas, and they have one that is like a four legged uh, robot that carries stuff. Okay. And of course, oh, yeah. they're, not, they're not gonna show you that on the video, but that can also be demonized to just load it with fucking automatic machines, and that she will walk around to you and just shoot you, <laughs> you know. But I think that when Robert and I were watching, uh, I think the Iron Man movie, uh, we we actually went through through a YouTube video just tutoring and derailing about technologies. There's an exoskeletal uh, machine that they can even be like kind of sitting down, but it looks like they're walking, you know. Uh, that supports their back so they can go long hauls like more than 100 miles without any issue because they're not doing any effort. It's just like this thing is actually making their legs move, but they're just sitting their butts on the exoskeletal machine. And it looks like they're running and they're not. So it helps them cover big, big uh, uh, distances without actually exploiting the shoulder for being ready before battle. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of scope for for that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. The master chief, the master chief's um, Spartan armor being just one idea. Yeah, uh, but I, I think there's a lot of scope there. It's just the technology is very hard to um, to, to make uh, it a compact way. I would be interested to say, right? Realize, yeah, yeah, to realize ba battery size and and how long yeah. it will run and things like that's a big problem. Um, Elon agree. Musk is working on smaller batteries. Maybe they'll get there eventually. But it's another case of um, while parts of the technology are currently feasible, other parts just aren't yet. And miniaturization is one of the big things, especially in power sure. sources, which um, if you can create a small enough power source that would be reliably and not so dangerously run um, something like that, then there's a much better chance of actually creating it. Of course, um, uh in times of war, um, technology 
advances in these areas become really rapid. And that's because a huge amount of money is thrown at it. Uh, and the best minds are not doing peaceful things. They're trying to help the country win. Um, we have a lot of technology we have today. Um, we had a lot of, we actually have to thank World War One and World War Two for where we are now. Uh, certainly, if there wasn't two world wars, it wouldn't have been 66 years between the first powered flight and landing on the moon. That just would not have happened if it wasn't for two world wars. And shame as it is to say, I would love humanity to progress speedily uh, in times of peace, but we just don't. It's yeah. got to, there's got to be a threat for us to actually step up and really crank up the technology. So, um, you know, maybe there'll be a threat of an alien invasion and we'll suddenly have Spartans and Pelicans and Condors and Pillars of Autumn and all that sort of funky shit. Well, my so, kids, you know. my kids have animal names. Yeah. <laughs> Warthogs. <laughs> Chupacabras. Chupacabras. Does anybody get that reference? Does anybody get that reference? <laughs> Chupacabras. <laughs> Do you get that reference, boys? I think you might. I think so. There's a show actually about uh, the Imperfects, I think it is. Have you seen that one? Uh, red versus Blue. Come on. Where have you been? Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, I actually got to know about that because Robert showed it to me. Uh, red versus blue was great. It's, but I mean, yeah. there's a show called Imperfects. Like these three, three teenagers, and one is like a banshee, the other one is another kind of monster, and the other one is a chupacabra, actually. <laughs> 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 and they just go terrorizing people, like doing like same. They're like anti heroes, so they do good shit, mm -hmm. but they're actually like like uh, mythology demon things. <laughs> hey, I'm still taking Colin petitions Perfect. for the next operating system for Mac to be El Chupacabra. El Chupacabra, yeah, man. Yeah. Should be. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we, so yeah, we might see some of this stuff at some point in the future, but we haven't got there yet. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so that is the show for today. Um, thank you everybody for coming and listening to us one more time. Um, hope to see you in the next episode. Uh, just remember, we're going to start um, broadcasting our live recordings on our Discord. Uh, so just go into the uh, our bio and you'll see the link for the invitation to get into the Discord channel. Um, we usually record on Sundays uh, and that is around 6 uh, p.m. Eastern time. Uh, if, if you're not sure... Uh, you can reach out to us and we can tell you definitely uh, if that actually changes. Uh, let us know if this is something that you want to continue to see. We started it today. Obviously, no one knows about it. So no one is on our uh, Discord listening to us. But hopefully, by the time you hear this, um, uh, you, might wanna do, you might want to attend and see this derailment in, in, in real life. You know, that's... Um, and... and it, it, it's it's in you know Captain Chaos ness that it is the, the lack of rails in the show. <laughs> <laughs> he so, does bring the chaos. Yo. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> so just remember, reach out to us on Twitter. Let us know what you think about this episode. Let's continue this conversation. Uh, and uh, join our Discord, and we and there we have multiple channels where you can actually go to the roles channel and pick what you want to see. Where um, and we can start talking about you know we have a, a cyberpunk channel, we have Star Wars, Star Trek. Um, just come join us and let's talk sci-fi, which is something that we all here love. And now we say habla español, and I also speak Portuguese. So come join from anywhere you can. Come over. Yeah, we even have a, a, a Espanol channel. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, si hablas español, únete Dale a acá. nosotros. Y podemos hablar en español. Raise I love. <laughs> and raise just like every other listener right now. What? <laughs> are, you, are you speaking Swigali again? Swigali? <laughs> hey, no, man. All, all bullshit. Aside, your French is magnificent. 
Oh, <laughs> he's still stuck to that. <laughs> I think, Ray, you oh, should record something like that and send it to our <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay, so uh, this is it for this episode. Thank you so much. I'm sorry? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the fun never ends. If you guys join our Discord, when we stop the recording, it just continues. So just, you know, next time... Hopefully we see you there. Thank you yeah. so much for being and uh, and uh, listening to us. Just one more time, thank you so much. I hope to see you soon, and let's keep the conversation going. Bye. <laughs>